We have a whole bunch of economic news. We have GDP numbers. We also have new unemployment numbers. Unemployment numbers probably will not talk about today, probably tomorrow. But I do want to talk about GDP. So we are in the middle of a pandemic. We anticipated that Q1 GDP numbers, Q1, of course, January, February, March would not be great. Q2, in which we are right now, we expect to be really bad. And then there's certainly a question mark around Q3 and the idea that Q4 numbers will be dramatically recovered. So what does the first quarter look like? Why do we care about GDP? Well, when we're trying to figure out the economic impact of the coronavirus, we look at the stock market, even though it doesn't really tell us that much. And we've talked about why before we look at unemployment, how many people are working, how many people are losing their jobs. We look at wages and we've also been waiting on GDP. Q1 GDP was down 4.8 percent. This is the largest drop uh, since late 2008 in the throes of the Great Recession. This is the first GDP decline at all in six years. And it's not surprising. We, we were expecting this to understand these numbers. First, it helps to know what GDP is. GDP is the gross domestic product. That's the total value of goods produced and services provided. Uh, if you if, if you have two businesses, a factory and a hair salon, for lack of a, a better term, uh, for lack of a better example, the factory produces one hundred dollars worth of goods. The hair salon provides one hundred dollars worth of haircuts. That's two hundred dollars in total product as this GDP is measured. Of course, uh, there are many other elements that go into it. It went down in the first quarter because we had January and February, which were reasonably normal months as far as the economy is concerned. And then in March, stay at home orders started because of coronavirus. Businesses shut down. Fewer things were sold. Fewer people were working. Fewer services were provided in the second quarter, which is April, May, June. We are about a third of the way through Q2. There's the idea that GDP could be down as much as 20 percent. Some people are even throwing around the number 30 percent, which is devastating. These are we've actually become numb today. We learned another three point eight, three point six, something like that million people filed for unemployment last week. That's way down from a few weeks ago, but it is an insane number, historically speaking. And we've become numb to these numbers of absolute economic devastation. So now let's go beyond the headlines and really dig into some of the data that made up the GDP decline of four point eight percent, because that may not be what you expected. It's very interesting. So first of all, we can separate personal consumption into goods and services. As I mentioned before, uh, uh, goods and services combine to make up GDP. Goods were actually almost unchanged. Goods as part of Q1 GDP were only down a tiny bit. Now, maybe this is intuitive. Maybe it's not durable goods like cars and furnishings were certainly down. There's not a lot of car sales going on. Many dealerships are closed. Um, furnishings. People aren't really going out and, and buying too much furniture right now. But non durable goods were actually up about one percent. So that includes, of course, food and beverages that are consumed off premises, meaning grocery stores. That makes sense. Goods almost unchanged overall in total. Services, of course, were down. Household spending on services was down pretty significantly, about six percent. But there was also a major decrease in health care spending. And this is something that really tells us a lot about how our economy is organized and not particularly for the better. Uh, so you might imagine, wait a second, we've got a pandemic. Everything that's going on right now is because of a medical situation that people need treatment for. People are filling hospitals for. How is it that with a million, almost 1.1 million confirmed cases of coronavirus in the United States, health care spending was down during Q1? And the answer is that routine health care is almost completely shut down. Everything from dermatology visits for a skin rash uh, to elective and non-emergency surgery, it's all but canceled. It's all but canceled. This also reminds us that the main point of our health care system is to make money. The economy is hugely reliant on revenue from health care, and that's not good when, in my view, the main goal of health care should be to keep people and to make people healthy, not to make money. This is a structural analysis that can be done. 
when you're trying to think about how an industry functions. If we ask how do cable news channel, what is the main purpose of cable news channels? Is it to inform people as much as possible? No, it's to make money. Once you understand the primary purpose of an industry, you understand why they make the editorial decisions that they make, et cetera, so on and so forth. If you look at the healthcare industry in the United States, when you realize, well, it, it's primarily organized to be a profit center, it's primarily organized to make money. It tells you a lot about why it fails in the areas in which it fails and what we are seeing during a medical pandemic, during a viral pandemic, which is a medical event. We are seeing one of the largest reductions in GDP came from the healthcare industry because so much of that industry, of course, you've got emergency rooms, which are very full. You have ICUs, you have hospital beds. But when you're looking at everything from, you know, orthopedic, you need to have your knee uh, uh, scoped arthroscopic surgery on your knee. For example, you're putting that off. Orthopedic surgeries are very, very profitable. You get the idea. So when we look at those numbers, a large portion of the decline in GDP in Q1 came from within the healthcare industry. So 4.8% decline in Q1. If we have a full quarter of lockdown, April, May, June, the numbers could be absolutely devastating. Now, some states are starting to open probably too soon. Remember, though, Trump can't open the country. Trump can't open states. Governors can't even really do it. They can allow it. But even if businesses start having employees standing there waiting for you to come in, if people don't go in, the numbers are not going to be dramatically better. My sense right now is May is going to be not good, but it will probably be better than April. Hopefully June can be salvaged to some degree. And I mean that both economically, psychologically, socially, culturally, everything. But we just don't know. We have to go where the data takes us. And right now we are still having huge death numbers. We, I think yesterday we found another 24,000 new cases. So we've been in a plateau that's lasted about a full month. And I don't believe uh, at the at the national level, we are clearly on the other side of it. States like New York are. Uh, nationally, the numbers are still very, very high. What if you could read 10 books in just one sitting? That's exactly what one of my favorite apps lets you do. It's called Blinkist. And what they do is take thousands of popular nonfiction books. They condense them down into text or audio that you can consume in 15 minutes. Blinkist makes sure that you're getting all of the important core insights from each book. So it's perfect for exploring a book you otherwise wouldn't have time for. If there's a full book you're thinking about buying, you can use Blinkist to get a sample first. Just think how much you can enrich yourself by being able to soak up an entire nonfiction book in just 15 minutes. I recently checked out the book Podcast Marketing Strategy by Daniel Rolls and Kieran Rogers and so useful, so particularly applicable to what I'm doing. Really recommend it. Blinkist has books on politics, philosophy, science. They have 27 different nonfiction categories and a subscription is only about eight bucks a month and you get the entire library. But you can try it totally free and get 25 percent off a subscription when you go to Blinkist.com slash Pacman. I've put the link right underneath this video.